Welcome to a different series, brothers. This will be a little different as I usually make because I will take the Warhammer 40k lore but scale it down to a level of understanding for newcomers who are either starting into the Warhammer 40k lore or a combination of that with the coming Dark Tide game. And as I was editing this, I was about to make a joke about the game's release date in before the announcement made, but luckily we had the announcement that the game will come out in September. Although it is weird to have it on the 1st of April in Australia time, but I don't think this was intentional. What I will do in this type of series is I will be hitting on the characters in Ducktide of what role they serve, what they do, who they are since they're part of the faction of the Imperium, who are they against, what is the planet, why is the planet so important to the Imperium, and etc. Plus, with some extras added to the sign that I will be mentioning in this video. And of course, if this does well, the video itself, I might make some more videos in the future talking about the weapons and not some other times if they're represented in Doctide. With so much speculation about the game, I won't be talking about that much in this video as we don't quite exactly know the game other than knowing that it's just Vermintide 2 but in 40k. So it is better off to wait and see with our own eyes and can make judgement yourself. For me, I am just a 40k bias, so of course I would just get the game itself because it's 40k. I do the same with Space Marine and Space Hulk and since this day, it hasn't changed much either and I still play them. To what I can understand in the trailer is the characters, there's two Imperial Guard, well three if you count the Ogren which is the big fellow, and what it seems is to be a orator or a member of Ecclesiarchy which I'm not too sure about it but it leans to that direction at the very least. And the story of it, it is the Inquisition sent a scouting team to investigate of an unrest that is happening on the planet Otoma Prime to where the fuck that is on the map? Specifically on a hive city called Tertium, and as we know for the scanner team from the trailer, most likely they haven't returned alive. So now we have the current characters from the video writer novel from the famous author Damn Abnett. We know that they were imprisoned for whatever reason, and they got hired from the Inquisition to clean up the mess and investigate of what's going on in the underground of the Hive City. But to what we know, this involves with chaos and they have been spreading on the underground for quite some time. Which the Inquisition doesn't want to make it spiral out of control and lose a world and have their hand forced to make the decision to execute the Order of Exterminatus. Now, if you didn't understand from all of that of what I just said, that was the point, and now I can explain to you in a more simple manner of what XYZ is in 40k. And now we're going to start off with the Imperial Guard. To begin with, with the one of the most simplest factions is the Imperial Guard. The Imperial Guard are the main body force of the ordinary human soldiers and recruited from different worlds of the Imperium as the Imperium are a human galactic empire holding millions of worlds and fighting on every front against Xenos, traitors, heretics and chaos and as the slogan says, there is only war. Mainly their purpose is to be thrown to the meat grinder in order to blunt the enemy enough and they can either keep throwing the Imperial Guard's lives into the meat grinder until they overwhelm the enemy or they will blunt the enemy enough to the point they can send more elite forces to finish the job, which sometimes that happens. Of course the forces of the Imperial Guard wouldn't be a problem as they are millions and billions of forces which are re easily replaceable with no issue of reinforcements as the human population is so massive that the birth rate of humans can repopulate in mere hours in the Hive City. The Imperial Guard don't go alone into battle as they have their own vehicles, aircraft as support, despite some of them looking goofy and bizarre, but some of them are effective, although some of them have a lower chance of survivability you might as well make something that counts with them. One of the branches that are part of the Imperial Guard are the Ogrins, a genetically built human on a specific planet condition they are mainly on. They are massive beings but with feral intelligence, which you could say on the intelligence of the level of a child. Although with such low IQ, they are excellent warriors for the Imperium, because they don't need much convincing just to tell them grab a gun or sometimes a barrel of a blowed off tank just to make something that counts. The height is roughly 8 to 9 foot tall as estimation in 40k, which is pretty difficult to find a specific size other than knowing it's bigger than this or that. Now with the romanticism of dying in glory on the battlefield for a cause is great, but keep in mind as an Imperial Guard or a citizen in Imperial World slash Hive City, your individual worth is meaningless to the Imperium, and you are there just as cannon fodder. 
You are there to serve a purpose and then die. It could be a mere couple of hours, maybe a couple of days after you join the guard or the workforce. It doesn't really matter. So don't think too optimistic about the situation until you made a blind mistake of your choice. But then again, there is no such choice in the Imperium. The Inquisition are one of the most powerful organizations and have the highest authority in the Imperium, and they will only answer to the Emperor himself as he is the only true judgment upon them. Their main role is to protect humanity to whatever means necessary. Most Inquisitors will go in an independent mission to whatever resources they need. For the worlds they to have some problem, in quotation marks, the Inquisition will spot this problem while investigating on the world and depend on the situation, the Inquisitor can make a decision to send a force to deal with the problem, or if the situation is lost, they can make the last call of exterminatus. But this will be the only thing they would do as a last choice when no other options are available on the table. And to destroy a world with great importance would be a massive loss to the Imperium. In short context, Exterminatus is an order that is launched from orbit down to the surface of the planet, and obliterates the Earth's surface and leave it as a barren waste. Of course there are other types of Exterminatus, but depends on the world, they can use it on other methods if needed, but I won't get into this one as this is just an overview. The Inquisition have three types of branches, and each branch has their own focus point when it comes to their role. We have the Order Malleus, Order Xenos, and Order Hereticus. Auto Malleus is they are pretty much just demon hunters and anything that is related to Chaos Taint. Auto Xenos, they are just Xenos hunters, which is pretty much anything that is not human and needs to be dealt with. Auto Hereticus are heretic hunters, and don't get confused with they are hunters against Chaos like the Auto Malleus. The Auto Hereticus are hunters against psychers, mutants, and traitors against the Imperium. Another thing about the Inquisition is as they have the highest authority in the Imperium, they can decide to whatever they want, but in their own minds, thinking that it will be best for the Imperium. As they are looking in the bigger picture, such as to destroy one world, it would be saving thousands kind of mindset. And as such, I would like to get more detail about the Inquisition, but there is so much about them that that is where I think there will be enough to who they are as an organization. And for myself, if I only know the rough surface of the organization of the Inquisition, as they have so much of it and so many characters in the Inquisition as well, that brings fascinating stories, aka Isahorn. But maybe at some point I might get into that side if I ever finish um, <coughs> Horus Heresy novels. This will be a quick overview summary as there isn't much about this faction and of course they are the most obvious faction even for a non-40k person. The Ecclesiarchy you can call them as priests as they are a fanatical worshippers organization believing the Emperor of Mankind as a god. They have churches all over the Imperium that would spread the word of the God Emperor and keeping its citizens and its workers in line to keep the Emperor's faith in check. And if anyone opposes against the Ecclesiarchy then they oppose Mankind itself and the Ecclesiarchs would declare them as a heretic. Of course, there is much, much more than that, but um, you better stick to your work, citizen. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. A hive city is like a city, but over a hundred. They could be the size of a continent, roughly so, but that depends from world to world, where they store trillions and many more citizens in the current age of 40k. They live like it's the slums, terrible conditions of living and working 12 hours per day while you are near or in thick toxic of fog of pollution and being in a toxic waste and having recycled air and water and some questionable food as well but better not knowing where it comes from so you can have a better enjoyment eating it. In the past as they call it the age of technology or the dark age of technology, it was in between the year of 50k to 20k which was during the peak of human rationalization and science where humanity pretty much had the opposite in the current 40k standards, where back then, where they lived in the best of their lives, had the strongest weaponry in the galaxy ever known, and having to make black holes to destroy enemies, and plus having AI to do the work and serve for them for complex systems. So pretty much they lived in paradise, as you can imagine. Of course, after the age of technology or the dark age of technology, they had their downfall with many catastrophic events and with some more to follow up. They had lost significant portion of knowledge of technology that humanity held. But even worse, you could say, they had a civil war, years later, called the Horus Heresy, 
which has led to the human species on a downhill spiral ever since. And with thousands of years of technological decay, you could say they were the shadow of their former self. From the highest peak of civilization to the downfall of a barbaric superstition. Chaos is very related to the Warhammer fantasy when it comes to the Chaos Gods and this follows with them. Chaos, as the name suggests, like it's chaos. But in 40k terms, they are in a different realm called the Immaterium, or an easier description is the Warp, which was once a realm of souls, but because with so much spiraling going on for millions of years, with so much use of mortal emotion, it has changed and manifested with the four main Chaos Gods, and it keeps feeding in to the current era of 40k. And ironically, the main food source for the Chaos Gods is humanity, in order to keep living in the Immaterium world. The Chaos Gods you have is Korn, the God of Blood, Rage and War, Zinch, the God of Change, Trickery and Sorcery, Nurgle, the God of Plague, Despair and Stagnation, and Final, Slanesh, of God of Lust, Pain and Greed. Each God has their own followers and manifested demons fighting their own cause, with each other or with the Imperium, in order to achieve what is called the Long Game. And the Long Game pretty much is domination over others in the immaterial world. But if it was to happen, then it would create a great imbalance where the Chaos Gods will be no more. But this has not happened and most likely wouldn't seem to happen in general. With the Chaos Gods, of course, they have demons as their agents to convert some humans, as humans are the easiest to be turned into their cause, as they are the weakest to resist the temptations of the warp. And they will do it with some subtlety, which can take a long while, until it creates a unrest to the world, until it becomes a demon world, which is, which is why you see such organization as the Inquisition to deal with and eradicate such threats to protect the greater galaxy of the Imperium. Where they don't just go to a planet and conquer for their own cause, which that does happen with Chaos forces, but the main thing about Chaos is they are very subtle, and they can take their time, as much as they can convert any human into their cause in order to achieve their own cause for the good long game. And as you can tell, with Darktide is a good example of what's going on right now. Of course, if you couldn't tell in Darktide, these are the followers of Nurgle, which is pretty interesting to point out. What is 40k without the main controversial character, which is the Emperor of Mankind? For the view of the Imperium, the Emperor is a god, a deity that protects humanity from the darkest times. A man who used to be a living being who appeared after the massive downfall of the Human Federation and United Terra, which is Earth for our terminology, on the Unification Wars. And after the Unification Wars, the Emperor went for a long crusade with his 20 sons, uh, oh shit, um, I mean... <laughs> I mean 18 of his sons, where which they are Primarchs. And Primarchs are pretty much a demigods of peak human genetic evolution. Taller, stronger, faster. And they were treated to be like generals for the Emperor's galactic unification called the Great Crusade. I'm going to skip some details even though there are so much about it, but mainly what happened is near to the end of the Great Crusade, one of his Emperor's most trusted sons on the title of War Master, Horus Luprakal, betrayed the Emperor and had half of the Space Marine legions on the side and started the Civil War, as it was called the Horus Heresy. The Heresy took five years until Horus fought with the Emperor on Terra, which is Earth, on a flagship called the Eventual Spirit, which is a spaceship in orbit but a hundred times bigger. As they fought, the Emperor defeated Horus by using the last use of his powers and shattering Horus' soul into existence never able to return again from the warp and able to be manipulated from the Chaos Gods again. Meanwhile, the Emperor being heavily wounded, he was placed to the Golden Throne, attached with shit ton of life support, as you can tell, while, while being fed with a thousand Psychers souls every day. Psychers in a simple term is just magicians, that's pretty much what they are, which they are able to manipulate reality into their own means, but in return, it could be very dangerous if you are unable to handle the temptations of the warp. Or, even worse, if a Psyker isn't trained enough, they might open a portal that demons might come through from immaterial to real space, and pretty much they will just go around and devour many innocent souls. 
The Golden Throne in Before the Horus Heresy was a construction device of a safe passage and safe travel called the Webway Portal. Because of the warp itself, it was unreliable and dangerous to travel through, but it was the only means of fast travelling to get to one space or another. But because the webway was broken by someone very fucking special that I would like to shit on every single day of his fiber bean, once this webway project was broken, the Emperor had to be on his throne, and I had to use every single fiber of his being to hold the gate, which was pretty much behind the Golden Throne that was holding it against demons that have been trying to get in ever since. The Emperor will be on the Golden Throne for 10,000 years, and he still lives as a rotten carcass, a living dead king observing his empire, decaying itself on barbarism, superstition, and religion. The ones he banished himself when he was alive and denied he was a god himself, but just a man, a powerful man, and promoted science and rational logic over anything else. Of course, the Emperor trapped on his Golden Throne and has left humanity to their own devices. Ironically, humanity saw and made the Emperor as a god, the protector of humanity, building churches on many wells to serve the word of the God Emperor, and bringing his light of faith to every citizen of humanity. Ouch. Well, that's uh, he's gonna be fucking livid when he comes back alive, I'm just gonna tell you that. This is just a bare surface overview of the type of factions that is represented to Darktide, and hopefully this might help you to get some better idea of the game or maybe the lore behind it. Or better yet, to get better immersion once Darktide gets released. And as I've mentioned before, if this video does well or very well, then I will make more videos in the future hitting other points of Darktide and 40k lore. Because when it comes to 40k, there is so much story and mystery in the galaxy, in the universe itself, that makes 40k so rich. Sure, the 40k universe with stories are so massive that it's intimidating, which makes you, you don't want to get into it, which is very common for newcomers when there isn't much guidance. From my experience for 3-4 years learning about 40k lore, and with some help and guidance, and I'm still learning as I go, it is better off to go small, go specific, and go slowly, than rather just buy more that you can chew. And the most important one is pick whatever you think it is most enjoyable. And there's so many other factions and stories that I haven't even mentioned in this video that you might as well give it a look around, which I always welcome that. And that is all it, my brothers. Thank you for watching. My name is Nilop, and take care.